Last week, the Heartland Institute, one of the sister organizations that CI works with, found itself broken into by an individual using a phony name, obtained their donation information, confidential information, publicized it, along with a salted document claiming to illustrate some surreptitious way of combating global warming's honest, fearful claims. Bad for our movement in a way, scary about the privacy violations we've come to expect in our world, but also very scary when you realize that driving market voices out of the policy debate is a great way to suppress free speech in America. More on that in a moment. Last week, the e-world e was abuzz with stories about the Hartland Institute's confidential donation files being, broke, being obtained by an individual, it turns out Peter Gleek, a, uh, a, a global warming alarmist, publicized widely. The information of that type is confidential. It should have been maintained that way. But along with that confidential donation information was a phony document pur purporting to show how the Hartland Institute was nefariously plotting to suppress any, any honest information on climate change risk and to distort the policy debate. This was wrong, the author, the, the purporter indicated, something really terrible. This is the kind of thing that ought to be suppressed. Bad in its own right. Debates about policy are critical, but much more serious when you realize that that individual is typical of a much broader effort to drive market voices from the marketplace of ideas. You see, Heartland should not be allowed to criticize global warming policies. But of course, the argument was business should not support Heartland in its endeavors to get those alternative stories out. We see it also in journals. Journal articles are not allowed to be submitted if the author in any way might have been funded in, to any extent by economic uh, companies, by firms, um, individuals in government who've had a background in industry, possibly as scientific experts, something wrong when those individuals are allowed to play a role in a policy uh, advisory group, or even worse, work within the government structure itself. And, and we see it even more in areas where the whole idea that business working with universities to promote scientific research, bad because market forces will only use it for perverse purposes. The goal of these individuals is to see any touch of economic activity in the, in the policy world as wrong. Market voices have no role in the political debate, they say, but if you drive market voices out of the policy debates that will determine America's, our future, what will be left? Only ideological voices. And there is nothing more frightening than to realize that America's future will be determined by ideological radicals like Greenpeace, like the Sierra Club, Consumer Union, and other groups. Truth is obtained by freedom of speech, by allowing all points of view, market voices and any market voices, science voices, economic voices, all groups allowed to participate in that debate. Free speech and the transparency it gives us about the pros and cons of a policy objective may lead us astray but it is far better than the suppressed speech that those who stole Heartland's documents would prefer.